Welcome to a lesson on graphing the basic rational function f of x equals 1 divided by x. We'll also determine the domain and range of the function as well as the equations of the asymptotes. Often the best way to graph a function we're not familiar with is to make a table of values. Typically we begin with input values or x values that are convenient, for example x equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's find the outputs or function values for these inputs or x values. So when x equals 0, the function value or function output is f of 0. So we substitute 0 for x, which would give us 1 divided by 0. And division by 0 is undefined, and therefore the function is undefined at x equals 0. So we'll put und for the output which means there's no point on the function at x equals zero, and therefore there's a break in the graph at x equals zero. The next input or x value is one, so the output or function value is f of one, which would be one divided by one, which equals one. This gives us the ordered pair one comma one. Notice if the input or x value was negative one, the function value or output would be one divided by negative one, which equals negative one, giving us the ordered pair negative one comma negative one. Next, when the input or x value is two, the output or function value is f of two, which is one divided by two, which equals one half, which gives us the ordered pair two comma one half. Also notice that when the input is negative two, the output or function value would be one divided by negative two or negative one half giving us the ordered pair negative two comma negative one half. When x or the input is three, the function value or output is f of three, which is one divided by three, which equals one third, giving us the ordered pair three comma one third. And when the input or x value is negative three, the output or function value is one divided by negative three or negative one third, giving us the ordered pair negative three comma negative one third. Let's go ahead and plot these points on the coordinate plane, and then we'll come back and complete the table of values. Let's go ahead and plot these three ordered pairs first. So the point one comma one would be here. The point two comma one half is here. And the point three comma one third would be here. Notice how as the inputs or x values increase, the function values or outputs are getting smaller and smaller and approaching zero but the function value or output will never be zero because notice how we have a numerator of one, which means for the graph, it'll pass through these three points and approach the function value of zero, and therefore it will approach the x-axis in this direction here. Now let's go ahead and plot these three ordered pairs. So we have negative one comma negative one, which is here, negative two comma negative one half, which is here, negative three comma negative one third, which is here. And the same thing, notice how as the x values decrease in the negative direction, the function values or outputs still approach zero, but this time from the negative direction. And therefore we know the graph passes through these three points and approaches the x-axis where y equals zero in the negative direction. Now let's focus on what's happening to the graph of the function between zero and one, and between negative one and zero. Let's select the values of one fourth and one half for two values between zero and one, and we'll select the values of negative one half and negative one fourth for two values between zero and negative one. Let's go ahead and find the output or function value when the input is one half, which would be f of one half. f of one half is equal to one divided by one half. Dividing by one half, is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so this is equal to one times the reciprocal of one half, which is two over one, or just two. One times two is two. This gives us the ordered pair one half comma two, which means when the input or x value is negative one half, we'd have one divided by negative one half, which equals one times negative two, which equals negative two, giving us the ordered pair negative one half comma negative two. And now let's find the output or function value when x is one fourth. 
the function value is f of 1 fourth, which equals 1 divided by 1 fourth, which equals 1 times 4 over 1, which equals 4, giving us the ordered pair 1 fourth comma 4. Similarly, when x is equal to negative 1 fourth, the output or function value will be negative 4, giving us the ordered pair negative 1 fourth comma negative 4. So let's go ahead and plot these two points on the coordinate plane. So we have 1 half comma 2, which is here, and then 1 fourth comma 4, which would be here. So notice how as the inputs get smaller and smaller and approach 0 from the positive side, the function values are getting larger and larger in the positive direction, and therefore the graph is going to approach the positive y-axis in this direction here. So we say the function values are approaching positive infinity as the inputs, or x values, approach zero from the positive side. And then we have negative one-half comma negative two, which is here, and a negative one-fourth comma negative four, which should be here. Notice how as the x values approach zero from the negative side, the function values are getting smaller and smaller in the negative direction, approaching negative infinity, which means the graph approaches the negative y-axis in this direction here. So this is the graph of the basic function f of x equals 1 divided by x. Notice how the graph approaches the y-axis, and therefore the vertical line, this line here, that the graph approaches is called the vertical asymptote. And the horizontal line the graph approaches, which in this case is the x-axis, this line here, is called the horizontal asymptote. So to be more formal, an asymptote is a line or a curve that the graph of a function approaches or gets closer and closer to. So we'll give the equations of the asymptotes in just a minute, but let's also define the domain and range of a function. The domain is a set of all possible inputs, or in this case, all possible x values, and the range is a set of all possible outputs or function values, which are often y values. So let's give the domain, range, and equations of the asymptotes on the next slide. Here's a computer-generated graph of the function f of x equals one divided by x. Again, the vertical asymptote is this vertical line the graph approaches. The equation on the y-axis is x equals zero, and therefore the vertical asymptote is x equals zero. The horizontal asymptote is this horizontal line, the x-axis that the graph approaches. The equation of the x-axis is y equals zero. And now let's give the domain and range. Again, the domain is a set of all possible inputs or x values. Remember for the function f of x equals one divided by x, x can be any real number except zero because when x equals zero, we have division by zero, which is undefined which means the domain is all reals except zero. Using interval notation, we can state the domain as the open interval from negative infinity to zero, union, the open interval from zero to infinity. Remember, the right in parenthesis to the right and left of zero indicates zero is not in the interval. We could also say x is less than zero or x is greater than zero. Again, these intervals are equivalent. One is expressed using interval notation and one using inequalities. And now the range is a set of all possible outputs or function values, which are often referred to as y values. And we also mentioned earlier that the fraction one over x will never be equal to zero because the numerator is the constant one. And the only way a fraction can be zero is when the numerator is zero and the denominator is non-zero. We can also look at the graph and see that the function value is never equal to zero, which would be a point on the x-axis. So the range is also all real numbers except zero. So using interval notation, we would once again have the open interval from negative infinity to zero, union, the open interval from zero to infinity. We could also express the range using inequalities using y or f of x, Let's go ahead and use f of x and say f of x is less than zero or f of x is greater than zero. 
I hope you found this helpful.